Hello, this is Mingbo. In this video, I'm going to give you a highlight of our recent work which significantly reduced the bias found in the commonly used neuroscience tool which is called representational similarity analysis. Let's first start with what is representational similarity analysis. In neuroscience, people are interested in how the brain represents external world or a task. To do that, we might have our participant take our experimental task which might be as simple as just watching images on the screen, or as complex as solving a puzzle. At the same time, we can do a brain scan of the participant and record activity within the brain. What we can obtain is a spatial map of the brain's activity pattern, which dynamically evolve over time as the participant is taking our task. Here, the background shows part of the brain. In the foreground, the color maps shows which part of the brain is more active at a given moment. The global patterns might be quite different when the participant is watching an image of a face from when the participant is watching an image of a house. So how do we make sense of these different neural patterns? And how do we understand the brain's representation to different type of images? One way neuroscientists have came up with is to look at the degree of similarity between the neural patterns when the participants are watching different images, which is proposed by Chris Scott et al. In this very interesting paper in 2008, they found that within one part of human brain which is called inferior temporal cortex, the neural patterns are very similar when the participants are watching images within the same category, but are quite different when they are watching images between different categories. What's more interesting is that between human and monkey, we have actually very similar structure of representational similarity within the corresponding area. Since its initial success, the method has been adopted by many neuroscientists to apply to more complex tasks. However, there's one thing that's often overlooked, which is the method requires the task condition to be fully counterbalanced in order, but this might be hard to achieve in some more complex tasks. For example, in this diagram, each dot represents one task state. In this task, the states transition between each other following a Markov process. So each state can be considered as a, con a condition of a task. Therefore, by design, certain conditions always precede other conditions. If you apply RSA to one part of the brain, you might find an interesting structure. But if you apply the same method to white noise, you actually find a structure which is similar to what you see in the brain. Obviously, there shouldn't be any structure related to task within the white noise. Therefore, this method must have introduced some significant bias. In this paper, we derive the source of this bias. Furthermore, we provide a method that can significantly reduce the bias. To show that, we simulate some brain data following a simulated structure. Here, you can pay attention to the yellow box and we try to recover the structure with either standard RSA or our method. When the signal-to-noise ratio is low, the yellow box is barely visible in the standard method, but in our method, the yellow box can be clearly seen across different signal-to-noise ratio. This method has been integrated into a package called Brainiac and we encourage you to check out our NIPS paper in 2006 and our poster in the conference. Thank you very much for your attention.